Hello everyone and good morning, Bo here from BZ Hub, stepping in for the Modern Day Outdoorsman to present this week's Friday vlog, everyone. Dare I say it, the largemouth bass has been introduced into new waters in the US more than any other fish, and is yet to be seen as invasive, which goes to show that for this big mouth, they are here to stay, and happen to be widely available for fishing. There are multiple lakes within Fishing Planet that allow us to fish for largemouth bass, and when you think of it, if you fish all of them, it widens your knowledge about how to fish them in real life. So that's what this video is all about, giving you the knowledge to get those fish within Fishing Planet and then using that knowledge to approach them in your neck of the woods. So hit that like button and let's get started. In Fishing Planet, largemouth bass can be found at a number of places, including, get my reading glasses here, Mudwater River, Naharan River, Everglades, San Joaquin, Quajkin Lake, and Blue Crab Island. So for ease of comparison, and for you know lower level people, we are going to keep it to Mudwater River, Naharan River, and Everglades for this time around, giving you a few helpful scenarios that we can relate to real life fishing. Here at Mudwater, which is a level four area, mind you, we get to continue testing our casting spoon skill. Now this shouldn't be too different than the spotted bass we just went after at Lone Star if you're up mud water for the first time, but now we get to go for a little bit bigger fish. Now I know that for many people a spinner bait or chatter bait seems like a more modern option, but at level 4 we don't have the option to use either of those lures, so we're going to work with what we have. The idea here is that we're looking for a reaction bite from the bass, and this goes for spinner and chatter baits as well. The spoon is creating vibration in the water as well as reflections from the light of the sun, working like a distress beacon for predators in the area. Bass looking for a quick bite will react to these reflections and jump at the opportunity getting hooked in the process. Now locationally, when it comes to largemouth, we're looking for any locations that provide cover. Think of a lioness in the tall grasses of Africa, the bass is wanting to hide in some place, waiting for easy prey to go by. Lily pads, tall grass, logs, as well as man-made structures such as docks and, in the heron's case, a half-sunken vehicle, are great hiding places for bass. Moving on to Naharan River at level 10, we get our first chance to try out worms, tubes, and bass jigs, as well as craw trailers at level 11. Bass jigs are great because they're weedless weighted jig heads that keep you from pulling in too much vegetation from your fishing area, as well as can be fished simply with a straight retrieve or bouncing along the bottom. To create a better action or to imitate a bait in the area, you can throw on a craw trailer or minnow to create more interest. On the MDO, they've caught many a fish on the bass jig and craw over the past few weeks, and it is an absolute thrill to feel the thump thump of your lure moving along interrupted by no thump, and your line jig gently gliding away, set the hook, and you've got yourself a bass. Similar to the bass jig, the tube is a weighted creepy crawly that imitates something to eat and can be retrieved in similar fashions. Feel free to give them a try. If you read a lot of fishy articles, then you might know that the worm is king. Doesn't matter what future lures come out in the future, the worm is always a sure go-to for bass. The issue you may find if you're constantly moving lures like spinner baits and casting spoons is that using the worm correctly creates more of a curiosity bite than a reaction bite. Many finicky key bass that are shy to reaction bites may fall victim to this as it gives them more time to think out the situation. There are many ways to use a worm in real life. You can use a sinker and offset hook with worms to create a drop shot rig, a weighted jig head to create a ned rig, or the simplest of all, a hook right in the middle of the heavy worm creating a wacky worm rig. This may be where you've heard of the Gary Yamamoto Senko bait thrown around as the Senko worms have a good amount of weight for distant throws and sinking to the bottom quickly, as well as good action when retrieving. One of the bass caught in Friday vlog number 7 of the MDO was actually caught with a Senko rig, so give it a try if you're ever dealing with choosy bass. Moving on to the Everglades now at level 18, this is one of the best places to fish for bass in the game. The issue with going to the Everglades at level 18 is that you still don't get to take full advantage of spinner baits until level 26 and frogs until level 28. 
And as a bonus, if you've got Bay Coins burning a hole in your pocket, I always recommend the number 4 aught or number 5 aught buzzbait at level 26 as well. Because all these great lures are unlocked later on, I recommend for now using the level 14 3 8 ounce number 1 aught walker if you're bound and determined to go before 26. Expect solid hookups from the walker, spinner bait, and buzzbait as you fish the open areas of the glades. However, if you're wanting to pull some reaction bites out of the lilies, you'll need to go weedless with a frog. The frog is an absolute blast to use in Fishing Planet and great fun in real life. However, the one unfortunate issue with the frog is that the weedless build means your hookups can suffer. You'll see this while playing, but fear not, reel in a bit more and that bass may just go back for a second strike. In Friday vlog number 6 on the MDO, we see one bass that struck out at a buzzbait and many a more bites that tried to go after a frog, but simply just didn't hook up. Although I can promise you that many a bass has been hooked up with topwater lures without a video. But with that out of the way, I hope that gave you a few tips to use at Mudwater, Nahara, and at Everglades if you happen to be struggling a bit to get some bass in your keep net. Hey, a bit different than our usual Friday vlogs, but I hope this gives you a little bit more confidence about chasing down largemouth bass within Fishing Planet as well as in your local waters. If you do use any of these tips to go catch a bass near you, make sure you post a picture in the S3 Adventure Discord where you'll also find a handy dandy cheat sheet that'll help you catch fish in both Fishing Planet and in real life. I'll be sure to leave a link down in the description for you to join. I hope this video was helpful and as always hit the like button and subscribe for more weekly content in the future. But feel free to check out more videos while you wait for more outdoor fun. Comment down below if you've got any other tips for your fellow angler, just be sure to mention if it's for real life or on Fishing Planet. Take care everyone and as always, remember I guess that's my sign off. Does Zimdio have a sign off? Ah, oh, okay, well, it's, it's pretty much my sign off. Anyway, remember, it's always a great day to be a modern day outdoorsman. Catch you next Friday, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe for more content in the future. Feel free to check out a few of our other videos on the Modern Day Outdoorsman or check out BZ Hub, our outdoor gaming channel, with new videos every week.